Hi, welcome to this short course on knowledge pills about quality management systems or QMS. In this short course, I will show you what a quality management system is and how you can establish one. I will be covering important concepts you need to know to be successful in the implementation of a QMS in the life sciences industry. The short course is a good starting point for anyone working in pharmaceuticals, biotech and medical devices. The objectives of this course are to understand the meaning of quality and quality management system, QMS, and to get a general overview of some QMS guidelines. Quality is the ability to offer products and services with the right function and performance to satisfy customers' needs and enhance their perceived value and benefits. Quality is related to excellence or having products or services that are fit for purpose and that satisfy the requirements. Quality management system is a broad concept in the life sciences industry. For some, a QMS is a coordinated collection of policies, processes and procedures designed to ensure the quality policy and the corresponding quality objectives. It has the ability to consistently offer the best quality product or service for its intended use. Note that a QMS is not static. It changes and adapts to new needs over time using a plan, do, check, act cycle for continuous improvement. And how do you establish your quality intentions? First of all, by defining a quality policy. This is a document you use to write your quality commitment and goals related to your product, service, and how you will proceed. A quality policy is a framework that specifies strategic quality intentions, direction, quality commitment, and organizational goals. It is defined by the organization's top management. Examples of goals include delivering a product or service to the customer within the agreed upon timeline, delivering a product or service to the customer with zero defects. Underneath the goals, there are also objectives. The quality objectives are the quality-related, strategic, tactical and operational results that an organization wants to achieve. The objectives are the method by which you translate those goals into plans for improvement. Examples of quality objectives include increasing the on-time delivery rate by 10% in the next quarter, decreasing the non-conformance rate by 5% in 12 months. So, the problems and customer needs define our objectives, policies, specifications and requirements. We should mention that we also need to take the different regulations and guidelines into account. The ISO 9001 standard is designed to be flexible enough for different types of organization to use. For this reason, ISO 9001 does not specify what the objectives relating to quality or meeting customer needs should be. Instead, it requires organizations to define these objectives themselves and continually improve their processes in order to achieve them. The process promoted by ISO 9001 is based on the Deming cycle – plan, do, check, act. This cyclic approach to improvement is dynamic and can be implemented in all your business processes. It is a four-step iterative approach to solving problems and improving processes. It combines planning, implementing, controlling and taking actions for continual improvement. In the plan stage, you identify your non-conformities and investigate the current situation in order to understand the root cause of the problem that needs to be solved. Here, you plan the work or changes you need to make and specify the desired outcomes and results you want to obtain. For example, imagine you have customer complaints involving the late delivery of your products. In this scenario, you will probably need to investigate how your team and equipment are working and try to identify bottlenecks. The targets in this step are related to finding the core problem, planning the resources you need to improve the processes that are adding no value, establishing specific goals and objectives for measurement. In the do stage, you take action. 
Here, you apply the previous plan in a standardized way. You should focus on smaller and incremental changes to improve your processes with minimal disruption to your organization. For example, you can use a small-scale pilot plan as a trial. During this step, make sure you have metrics in place to quantify data. In the check stage, you assess whether your plan execution is working and whether you have met the results and objectives. This is the performance evaluation. In the example above, I explained that the delivery time should have been reduced with at least the same quality as before. In the event that there are failures, you can address the problems with specific actions. Finally, in the act stage of the plan, do, check, act cycle, you need to act. In this step, you can implement all the actions that you have identified in the pilot plan with solutions and recommendations. If the change is definitive, then you should integrate the changes into your standard work practices. If the changes are discarded, however, you should ask yourself what you've learned from the process and then restart the cycle. There is another standard guideline that is specific to medical devices, the ISO 13485. These requirements are divided into eight sections, with the first three being the scope, normative references and terms and definitions of the standard, and the last five containing the QMS requirements. In the later sections, requirements are based on a plan, do, checked, act cycle to drive and maintain improvements within the processes. Let's take a short look at those sections. Quality management system. This section highlights the requirements of the general medical device QMS, the documentation requirements to meet the standard and the requirements of the quality manual. Management responsibility. Management must be involved in finance and policy decisions. This ensures quality, compliance with policy and objectives. Management needs to make sure it is understood company-wide. The overview of the QMS and delegation of resources are under the direct responsibility of upper management as well. Resource management. Management must ensure adequate facilities as having enough space, tools, equipment and technology is essential to doing the work. The QMS must include processes that guarantee the equipment is also well maintained. Product realization. This section highlights the requirement of everything needed to obtain the product from planning and designing to creation or manufacturing, implementation and support of medical devices. It defines how you will design and develop the product along with the controls you apply. The criteria for risk management are also laid out. Measurement, analysis and improvement. These are instructions on how to incorporate feedback and other information that will enable management to maintain the effectiveness of the QMS, including customer complaints and the handling of adverse events, internal audits, monitoring and measuring of processes, non-conformities, CAPAS, data analytics. And lastly, there is the Regulation 21 CFR Part 820 about Quality Systems Regulation, QSR, for medical devices, which is used by the US FDA. It is a document that outlines current good manufacturing practice regulations, or CGMP, to ensure medical devices are both safe and effective.